This is the story of our very cold night in the Ukrainian wilderness. We're en route to Ukraine to meet a stranger who's going to take us deep into the Carpathian wilderness. That stranger's name was Bodan. He had told us about some remote shepherd's huts hidden in the mountains that are abandoned in the harsh winter months and are therefore free to stay in for anyone who fancied the challenge. Touching down in Lviv, we were both excited and a little bit nervous. Okay, tell me where we are. Vorokta. Which is where? we say it, in the Carpathian Mountains. Okay. And we are in a very jolly place. That's playing music and we've got bells on the walls and a little fire. It's very jolly. It's very jolly. <laughs> I, th I feel jolly. With bellies full of toast and Ukrainian coffee, we set off to meet the man that kicked this whole idea off. We were told there was no way we would find the huts without experienced local knowledge. And so Bodan had kindly agreed to act as our guide and help us navigate the mountains. We met him in a small car park, loaded our supplies and sleeping kit onto our backs and set off. Turns out it's a bit warmer than we were expecting. And dressed for a snowstorm and it's actually bright sunshine. With the weather turning from sun to snow in the blink of an eye, we got our first taste of the unpredictability of this extreme environment. As we entered the Carpathian forest, the adventure had begun. Covering over 190,000 square kilometres, Spanning eight countries and home to Europe's largest population of brown bears, wolves and lynx, the Carpathian Mountains are known as Europe's last true wilderness. We were beginning to see why. So where are we? Don't know. <laughs> Good answer. I've got no idea. After several hours of walking through thick forest, it had become apparent that we were lost. What's more, the conditions underfoot weren't exactly the easiest. Oh, oh. Oh. With identical trees in every direction, it was becoming increasingly difficult to know if we were making progress or just walking in circles. To make matters worse, Bodan had informed us that the unpredictable conditions resulted in several people getting lost and losing their lives in the mountains each year, something we were becoming all too aware of. Finally, the trees parted for the first time since we started the trek. Bodan had kept his cool and we were back on track. The ground steepened as we began our final ascent to the top of Kukul Ridge. So, we made it to the top. I think we're at the top. Are we at the top? Meadow one, right, that's right. So already we're starting to reap the rewards of what was basically the five hours track through a pretty monotonous forest because the sun's just poked its head out. We've got views back over all of the mountains that we've been climbing through. It's pretty special. With the light fading, we had made it to the top of the ridge. Crossing into the final snow-covered meadow, we were exhausted but relieved. Finally, we could see our home for the night. We had reached the shepherd's huts. Okay, so we are at our home for the night. There's a little shepherd's hut. Charlie's collecting firewood. And basically, it's a bit like what the Scottish have, um, the Scottish, yeah, they have in yeah. Scotland, the Bothies. Um, basically, anyone can stay here. It's you don't have to pay anything at all. But um, you basically come, use it, sleep the night, and then leave it how you found it. But this one's pretty good. It's actually got a little stove inside, so we're gonna get some wood and dry our socks on it. Oh, 
what's for dinner. <laughs> Tell me about it. Noodle goodness. It was actually so delicious, especially after that war. <sighs> after a feast of pot noodle and pepperami, we were exhausted. We climbed into our sleeping bags and that was it. Lights out. Nice and cosy, how are you feeling? I feel good, actually. Well, I mean, I don't look good. I feel like <laughs> I look a bit sleepy. It was an, actually an okay sleep. We just woke up at sunrise. It's beautiful. So, that's the reward you get if you spend the night in a shepherd's hut in the Carpathia Mountains. Unparalleled views. Well, it was actually quite cosy in there. We had, well, very warm sleeping bags. Yeah, warm that sleeping helped. bags helped. But the main thing was exhaustion i think that was like the main, <laughs> main factor um, right, let's go make some tea yeah let's do it miles from civilization the huts are small and basic but what they lack in comfort they more than make up for in location Surrounded by nothing but wilderness, this is one of the most remote places we've ever spent the night. A very cool experience. Cold but well rested, we packed our bags and began to make our way back up the ridge. Talk to me about how cold you are. That's fair enough. Is that that? Yeah. Well, on the scale of one to cold, how cold is it? About a nine. Sort of nine. Around. It's not cold it's yet, though. Wet. It'll be a ten. But it's pretty cold. Do you struggle in the cold? No, I'm really brave in the cold. <laughs> 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 woken up and gone up onto the ridge that divides the two uh, meadows and as we did that the cloud lifted up and the sun came out so for the first time we can actually see where we are and now you can see why they call this Europe's last true wilderness it's literally miles and miles and miles of nothing Right, so when we're sat on our bums in London thinking this is boring or we're watching TV or we're working, we're behind a desk daydreaming of adventure, this is what we're dreaming of. This kind of thing, getting out into the wild, going to new places that we've never been before, uh, places we don't know much about, places that scare us a little bit, push us out of our comfort zones because it gets you going, it gets the emotions uh, mixed up into a cocktail of fear, nervousness, excitement, awe, um, and that's what makes you feel alive. You've got to appreciate these moments. Right, so we're now on our way back down, which is, I have to say, a lot easier than yesterday. Because there was a lot of climbing, but it's quite slippery. Charlie's already fallen over, I think, five times? Four. Four times? Four, that's not I thought we had a bleeding elbow, but luckily he's okay. As we made our way back through the forest to civilization, we felt a real sense of achievement. We had boarded the plane to Ukraine not knowing quite what to expect. We were in search of adventure, and in the Carpathian Mountains that is exactly what we had found. When so much of life is about repetition, taking three days to experience something totally unusual had made us feel alive. Thank you, Bodan. That was three days we won't be forgetting in a hurry. So how wet are they? I'm wanting them to be squeezed out. They are pretty wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Oh, I'm going to go. Oh, I'm going to go. I see you, Greg.